Hi designers, today I want to talk about um, hope, which, you know, I think is one of those things that we actually don't talk about enough. One of the things that um, recently has been happening, and this is being taped a little bit ahead of time for the podcast um, and for the YouTube channel, so if you're watching, I'm watercoloring today. I recently finished in October a design boot camp. And um, I also were on the verge of doing a summit. And the interesting thing about both of those things is that part of the reason I do them is because they bring people hope. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that really often in our lives, we make decisions based on what we think are going to be safe, right? So we make choices that keep us safe. It's, it's what we're meant to do, right? It's our survival instinct to choose the things that are not going to hurt us, uh, choose things where people can't judge us, because those things are all difficult for our egos. It's difficult for making progress we feel when actually the exact opposite is happening recently i was listening to a podcast with brooke castillo and she talks about um, the cost of our goals which i thought was a very interesting uh, thing that you know, we don't talk about very much. I love goal setting. Many of you guys know that in January for our design suite, we do um, annual planning together. It's really a fun time. It's an exciting time. And once again, it's a time period where my designers find lots of hope. Hope about what the new year is going to look like, what we're going to do. Um, think about with Christmas and the holidays around the horizon, all of the hope that uh, our children maybe feel about Christmas Day, right? There's a lot of things that make hope really fun. But I thought this idea of goal setting and that there is a cost to goal setting was a very interesting one and one we don't talk about. She says that it's okay that the cost it's okay if we don't actually achieve the goal because the cost is what makes it worth it. And I thought that was really interesting. Many of you guys know that, or maybe are even part of, uh, we have a, a design program called Design Suite. And it's so hard because I always tell people we are not a get fast, quick, kind of thing. Like I, I hear about all of these things, especially for business owners where they start making a lot of money really fast. That is not this field. It takes a long time to get to where we want to be as designers, even with a very structured plan. And, and my designers have a very structured plan. Most designers, if you're here and you're kind of doing on your own, you don't really have a structured plan because you've never done it before. You don't actually know what works. You don't actually know if the plan that you've put into place, uh, you know, if the steps are going to get you to where they you know, you hope it will be. It doesn't mean it's not worth it. The cost is in fact worth it, but it, it's also difficult. And so sometimes our hopes then become dashed because we don't accomplish what we want to accomplish. And she basically says it's okay not to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Instead, that the cost was worth it. I agree with that to some degree. I think there's lots of reasons to uh, do goals that we maybe don't achieve or that are difficult to achieve. I actually think there's a lot of good things that happen in that. And especially with, you guys know, January goal setting season around the corner, um, I wanna make sure that you guys are building yourself a, a solid amount of hope because there's lots of hope especially in this industry for making it and there is a lot of need for great design 
you know, recently everybody's been freaking out about uh, generative AI, especially for designers. And we recently had a design conference for our design suite members. And my, one of my goals was for them to see just where the AI was and how it is not going to replace your career. If anything, more jobs have been created for it. The number of uh, designers you can now find whose only job is to fix generative AI is almost astounding. Um, now you can go into the market, there are lots of marketplaces where literally you can hire someone to fix generative a AI. So that's like a new job that happened basically this year because of it. But there are other things, right? There are other things that you know designers tend to be worried about where I say like, listen, that's, that is not something I would worry about. I would worry about getting so good and so smart and pivoting so swiftly in this field that you're not gonna worry about it. I recently just talked to my design suite team about this because we kind of made the decision that we're basically going to need to, it, we do a quarterly virtual conference with our designers, but we're basically gonna make sure and um, add, for better for lack of word, always a segment on uh, generative AI every quarter because the technology is changing so fast and it's of course this is one of the things that's making people hopeless people who especially who already have decent design um, uh, businesses they're kind of freaking out because um, they're afraid of losing instead of playing to win and I feel like that's something we don't talk about as well because once for many of you you're brand new designers you're just getting in here but there does come a time in your career where people behave um, because they're making enough money to behave this way they feel like they um, are playing to not lose instead of playing to win which is very problematic you guys it is very hard to maintain on just not not losing um, it's also very hard to grow your design business if you are playing simply to not lose, okay? So that's why I think it's really important that we start really digging into this whole idea of hope. Because what I find is people who have that feeling of hope, which can come from a lot of things, right? There are a lot of things that can give us hope. But when we start playing from this idea of hope, what happens is that we behave differently. And I want you to behave differently. I want you to behave and really dig into the kind of designer that you have. If you listen to uh, business people and you listen to all these people who are excited or maybe concerned about AI, then you are going to freak out. I, I don't know how you wouldn't because everything I've heard makes me want to freak out. But then I go and actually play with the technology. I have firsthand experience, not secondhand, which is what all of these people are basically doing. They're talking about it, but you don't have firsthand experience of what's happening. So I go in and I mess around with it, and I'm like, uh, this is definitely not replacing me. This is not something I am concerned about. And that's why I really want you to actually get firsthand experience with AI, with anything that you feel like is changing in your business, right? Making smart moves, pivoting smartly, because when we do that, when we actually were firsthand acknowledgers of what's happening, what happens? We actually know how to pivot. We actually know what we need to do to create better product. We change the storyline. We stop being victims and we stop worrying, which by the way, you guys, is a huge waste of time and energy, right? So our, our brain really doesn't want to expound energy on things that aren't going to help us. So worrying about AI, it thinks because it's worrying, it's maybe going to be helping us when actually it's not. Instead, if we took all of that great energy and we changed it into positive and into action steps and into doing, we actually change the way our brain thinks and we change our actions. So it's a really fascinating thing. It's something I really would love for you to start thinking about, playing with, thinking about, and 
I think the, the number one thing I want you to get from this, well, I'm going to give you two things. The first thing is that if you don't have firsthand experience with something and you are relying on other people and what they're saying about anything, and right now the big topic is AI, but if you are spending all of your time worrying about that, you are using useless energy. You just are because you should be instead playing with this firsthand to see if it really is going to affect your life, to see if it really is going to change things for you, right? The second thing is that we need to move that energy into hope for the future and really start thinking about how this future can help us, what it can do for us, how it can help us and how creativity is actually going to change in the future. I talked about this in, I can't remember if it was the AI conference or an internal podcast I did for Design Suite, but one of the things that's so fascinating, because everybody's so freaked out about AI, is that no one is thinking about how this is going to actually change our industry for good. Everyone's freaked out. Now, I'm not, I am in no way someone who can predict what is going to happen, okay? I don't know what's going to happen, but this is no different in a lot of ways than what we saw happen to screen printers, to lithographers in the 1980s and the 1990s when we made the switch over to Illustrator and Photoshop, when everything became digital. This has happened, you guys, before, and most of it in most of our lifetimes, it's happened before. So that's why I'm like, everyone's freaking out, but like, just look at history. Things are more similar to what I see happening now, to what I saw happening as I personally was working through lots of new software. Do you guys remember Cork? Do you guys remember that? doesn't really doesn't really exist anymore. Adobe kind of took over for a lot of reason. I think I've, I've told that story before, what I saw happening at the university um, level for this. But it's, you guys, it's stop freaking out. Start like really digging in your energy into hope and what you can do because you're going to stay on top of it. You're not going to be like other designers. And I promise you there are lots of, we're tiny, like what we do at my company, we're small compared to the industry as a whole. The industry is huge. There are millions and millions of creative workers in it. And if even a small part of us pay attention to what's going on, we're easily going to pivot while others are still hanging out, still freaking out, not doing what's necessary to get themselves there. So um, I would say stop worrying and put your energy into that which is good. Put your energy into that which is going to make you great. And have hope. Lots of hope to be had, you guys. So much hope for our future. So much hope for the way technology has changed. If you feel like, and I remember when this happened, many of you remember when this happened too, when you were a brick, and, it, people who were brick and mortars, who didn't really brace themselves, didn't build websites, didn't do things to, to really get on board with what what happens online, they died. They didn't make it, right? But you're not going to be that person. You're going to be the person who goes out of their way to pay attention to the, what, what's happening in the industry. You're going to use those things and pay attention to those things to help boister your design career, okay? And it's gonna get you to the next level. Um, I think there is a lot of hope in this world. We live in an amazing day and age. There's a lot to be hopeful for you guys. There's a lot to look forward to. And so we should keep looking forward and keep using this creativity to get us to the next level.
Thanks, you guys, for joining me. If you're on the podcast, thank you for listening. If you have a chance, I would love for you to go give us a review. It is a lifeline of podcasts. Uh, You know we don't do any outside advertising currently here on the podcast, and it would help us out so much if you could leave us a review. The second thing is that we are also on the YouTube channel, and those of you who are hanging out with me, um, you will see me sometimes at a whiteboard and sometimes at a chalkboard and painting and drawing and if you are loving that I would love for you to subscribe to the channel it helps us out so much we are trying to grow our YouTube channel so we can be bringing more information about creativity design to those out there for free so thank you so much for joining us if you're not on the YouTube channel you can just go to youtube.com slash Karina Gardner and you can subscribe there Hey, did you know that you can visit me at makeanddesign.com to learn more about this podcast and join my VIP group for weekly freebies? I can't wait to see you there.